Sam, what did you think of this episode? Welcome to Madoka Magicast, a podcast devoted to the dark magical girl anime Puella Magi Madoka Magica. I am your host, Amanda, and I am joined by my co-hosts, Yasha and Vana. Hey, how are you Hi. doing? Guys? The Hi, owners, how are you? They are the <laughs> owners of the biggest revolutionary girl Utena website, Empty Movement. I'm going to join them as they watch Madoka Magica for the first time ever, and we are going to talk about what we love and sometimes don't love about the show. Although, I don't know if we're going to have much to talk about this episode when it comes to what we don't love about the show. Because this is a no, great episode. No, I love episode. everything about this episode. <laughs> this yeah. is a great episode. This is the other... So, in my opinion, there are three holy shit what the fuck episodes in this mm-hmm, series. Mm-hmm. The third one, where mommy mm-hmm. dies. This one. Yeah. And then episode mm-hmm. ten, which I am very excited to get to with you guys. Sweet. It is... In- it is very difficult for me to watch episode 10 and not cry. I- I've seen really? I've seen this show wow. at least six or seven times. I cry every single time I watch episode 10. Challenge yeah. 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 See, and I'm, I'm just watching Vana's face here, and she's like, tears. Tears? <laughs> <laughs> that means I like that episode. Then again, I mean, I do still cry at the season finales of Sailor Moon, so take that with a grain of that salt. One? Yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I'm looking forward to it does not necessarily mean I won't cry. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves here because this is episode no. eight, not episode 10. And this is depressing too. Mm-hmm. Thank yes. God. Yes. Good stuff. This episode is a big culmination of a lot of stuff that has been going on for the mm-hmm. past, pretty much since the the story began. Um, I was going to say, like, now that I'm thinking of it, like, because we just rewatched it to, you know, before the podcast, and I'm like, right. It was an info dump episode, but it never felt like it. Yeah. No, it really doesn't. I mean, I think that just goes to how well the how well defined the characters are at this point. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And just this has been set up very well. Absolutely. Even though even though I think you guys and probably a lot of people are able to predict what is going to happen a few episodes ahead of time Mm -hmm. here it still is this is an example about how media is not all about avoiding spoilers it really is more about the execution of ideas even if you kind of know what's going to happen or you can see it Mm -hmm. coming ahead of time Mm -hmm. 100 Mm percent yeah like like everything is is, so far in this series like especially like what happens in this episode it's telegraphed so well that yeah, it's not exactly like hard not to see where it's going, but it didn't matter to either of us that we had figured out where it was going. We were like, no, I want to see what happens anyway. Yeah, can, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the execution is what's really drawing you in at this point. Like, mm-hmm. the fine details will be like, oh, so that's what that means. I'm here for like the journey of discovery as to how that happens. Which yeah. Is- like I'm honestly, people this... getting their shit pushed in. Honest... And that happens in this episode. So. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, if I had had the entire series spoiled for me at this point, I really would not care because I want to see how it does it, not mm-hmm. what it does. Right. So right, exactly. And and I feel that it's even though I do try to tell people to avoid spoilers at all costs when they watch it, mm-hmm. even if you have been exposed to spoilers, I still think you can get a lot out of watching it. And this is an episode showing why. So maybe we should just jump right into it. I'm sure we're going to have a ton of stuff to talk about here. One second, though. Did we get any Curious Cats? Oh, Curious Cats. Oh, yes. Let us check that now before we begin. Yeah, before we get too far into anything. (laughs) We did get some interesting emails and messages that I did want to talk about at the very end. Okay. Okay. So we'll save some for the end. Yeah. Okay. So... This Anon asks, maybe you could get you could make whiskey sours for the rebellion viewing. Not exactly whiskey and orange juice, but it's close enough. You know, that yeah. could work. Or martinis, mm-hmm. like really dry martinis might work for rebellion too. Really dry <laughs> martinis. Mm, yeah, we should see. Oh Let's man, now I'm out. just thinking like the, the Hannibal martinis with the tears of little children. 
<laughs> well, that is literally <laughs> what we are going to be. No, we are going to be drinking uh, the tears of, I'm going to guess, more than half of the Malika fan base given. <laughs> their few, yeah. The general reaction yeah, that people no, seem to have. That's a thing in Hannibal, is at one point there's a sadistic character who uh, likes his martinis mixed with literally the tears of children. It's such a good show. Wow. <laughs> it's extra uh, as fuck. It's yeah, not I don't, shit. I don't always know what to make of, uh, you know, <laughs> the Hannibal fandom, but that's okay. People can I'm enjoy not their trash. <laughs> I have my own either. trash that I like. I cannot judge anyone else for <laughs> any of their media preferences at all. This is valid. Yes. No, I, li- I like whiskey sours. Not enough huh? egg white cocktails. You know, I, we should do, like, character-themed cocktails. Because I, yeah. I think you could do something really neat with, like, I don't know. Homura seems like an absinthe cocktail to mm. me. No, I've I'm never serious. had absinthe. I, it's not. It's you not, don't get high. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not, right. It doesn't it's, have the, half the, 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 the powers, reputation. The reputation is based music. entirely on that it was, like, 90% alcohol. <laughs> Yeah. So you just got like, oh my like God. fucked if you so much glanced at it. <laughs> Pretty much. But but something really, mm-hmm. really herbaceous like that. Just it's it seems to me to go well with Homura. I like I like whiskey sours, so I'm Or I'm that. I feel like Homura could also work as like a dark and stormy. Oh yeah. Mm, yeah. That's one of my favorites too. Mm, yeah. <laughs> or maybe like maybe with some kind of like blueberry twist to it, like a dark and stormy with like a little extra, one. yeah, I don't know. Um, and then Madoka's is just going to be the the sugariest. Yeah, we pink. still have some of that, that rose. really pink rose juice. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. like this incredibly pink rose. It juice is just that's like it's Madoka pink. <laughs> you know, this pink. is this is a completely spontaneous idea I'm having right now as we're recording. But what if we did some kind of like easy of like a Madoka Magica? Uh, that would like be fun. Drink, that, like a little drink zine with some illustrations and oh, some drink. Yeah. That'd be adorable. Cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. That could if be super fun. If we're going to do a watch along, if we can release the, the zine fast enough beforehand so that people can like get whatever for their favorite drinks, they can drink along with us while we Oh my watch. gosh. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. okay. I'm, in, I'm into this. Okay. Yeah. People listening. I'm, if you mm-hmm. want to contribute a cocktail or some drawings or whatever for this like PDF zine that we might put together ahead of the rebellion mm-hmm. watching, please email us. The email is madokamagicast at gmail dot com. Although you could DM us on Twitter or message us on Tumblr or whatever else might work for you, or just yes. flag us down wherever you yes. see yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> literally just at any of us on Twitter. You, yeah, you can find us. Send us we're not we're not hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I, I I dig this. Just like not, just something like kind of short and sweet and cute and mm-hmm. full of booze. Yeah, exactly. Something like maybe ten pages long. It doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that could be fun. Okay, well, I'm gonna post that on the Twitter later. Maybe yes. we can organize that. Excellent. Mm-hmm. All right, and that is... way we'll have like a lot of turret drink when we see Rebellion. So yeah, <laughs> that would be super fun. Okay. All right, let's do one more curious cat question before mm-hmm. we get to the episode. Actually, we we have a curious cat question that we put off from the last episode. Actually, that is very relevant mm-hmm. oh, to this yeah. episode. Oh yeah, because we I remember you mentioning that yeah. about Hitomi. So maybe we should address that one at the end of the episode after we've talked okay. about it. Okay, okay, let's do that. All okay. right. In that case, let us begin with this. Yes. Hotness. So this is episode eight. I was stupid, so stupid. Another cursed episode Mm -hmm. title yeah these these episode titles are real on the nose man Mm, yeah yeah the script was written by gen urobuchi storyboarded Mm. by shin ichi omada we've definitely seen his name before yeah we've definitely seen his name yeah same thing with the episode director which is takashi kawabata Mm -hmm. and animation by tomoyuki matsutomo and yuji kondo so uh, I, we've kind of already talked about it, but what did you guys think of this episode before we get into it? Ugh, good stuff. I'm here good for the stuff. angst. I'm definitely I'm, here for I'm, the angst in this. I'm delivery. here for the it. This this episode like uh had some of like the best moments of direction, and then a couple things that I like found really annoying. 
So it had like mm, really okay. high highs and really low lows. That <laughs> well, I hope you bring up. I hope you bring up the annoying things as we go through it. I oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, I I absolutely loved everything about this episode, and it just it felt right. Like it just felt like exactly what needed to happen at exactly the right point, and everything about the show feels super tight. Like it's yeah. been eight episodes. Like holy shit, we're we're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're here. Like I mean. Yeah. And we're both used to, I think, like, much longer series, because we didn't really stick around for anime when it started getting shorter. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I'm like, God, Uchina was still doing curry at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think Asuka had just shown up in Evangelion around now, yeah. and here we're like, people are dying. We are more, more than halfway through. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just, th- things are escalating, and I'm totally yeah. here for it. Well, I oh hi Sam. Sam is here to discuss yes, it with us. Maybe I should just <laughs> ship him off because he's being real yeah. on the way. This <laughs> oh fine, okay. We're, we're, he's, we're uh, listen. Right. He's very upset about what happened in this episode. Right? Yes, he is. He's we're locking up Cube yeah. here. He told and, us in a previous interview that he really likes Sayaka. That he did. He did. He's yeah. very angry about Sayaka, right, Sam? Yeah. Oh, oh I, I hear purring. purring. There he's purring. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's being carried around like a baby. <laughs> ah, so he cute. Loves it. And he loves it. All right, maybe we should jump mm-hmm. right into the cold open here. Sure, let's do this. All right. So we basically start up right where we left off last mm-hmm. episode. Sayaka is being crazy, uh, hacking away at Elsa Maria the Witch. Mm-hmm. And um, as she kills it, the labyrinth walls start to crack and crumble away. And uh, she stands up and she's like, she, she's being crazy, like doing her creepy voice and her creepy smile. And she's like, oh, it's so easy when you just ignore how much pain you're in. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, don't <laughs> think, I don't think they draw her the same as they did like in every episode previous. I don't think they No, draw they start drawing her once. kind of. Okay, yeah. two things. One, the flashback, I don't know if I, like, if they did this with the previous ones, but it's actually, like, a different aspect ratio from the regular show, which is oh, a yeah. very, yeah. Yeah, they do some, that like, with flashbacks. Yeah, that's some Christopher yeah. Nolan stuff. I like it. <laughs> I'm I'm dumb when it comes to cinematography. Why don't you explain to me why um, that would be done? It's kind of, like, the idea of it is is the the more narrow the screen is like the wider you get generally the more people associate it with like theater Mm -hmm. and theatrical things because like you think Mm -hmm. like you then you get to like a four three aspect ratio which is like old television but the wider the wider you get the more theatrical it is like that's Mm -hmm. like lord of the rings is like the thinnest screen ever because it's the most theatrical thing ever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so because you have that association with theatricality Mm -hmm. When you put something into this kind of aspect ratio, it's almost like a mental cue that you're watching a, like, a flashback. Okay. Almost. Like, it's, it just kind of reframes it as more of a, like, movie than... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's... I mean, I would have said that, like, you're probably right about it being wider, making it feel more like theater. I'm sure that's Mm -hmm. true. But I had always just assumed, like, like literally be acknowledging that it is being presented in a movie format Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. we we know that this is not the typical format so obviously this is like being played back yeah like yeah so that's yeah Yeah. like oh you're watching a movie right now you're not actually watching what's happening kind of Mm -hmm. yeah kind of feeling yeah exactly which i think is a really cool trick to for them to use i haven't seen that much in animation yeah it's and also we've too. already so we've already gotten one shaft shot with the face oh yeah she did the, so she did start... the neck the neck crane backwards where she yeah like, looks over her shoulder <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. i love that shot but i think there's at least three of them in this episode which oh yeah and there's been, at least, well. <laughs> there's been at least one other one before this oh yeah mm-hmm. well like yeah. one per episode is okay but there's so many all at once in this one that it starts to feel like hey we know that's a cool shot now stop it <laughs> we get it sayaka's like turning to the dark side yeah here. we get it she's, yeah. she's losing her shit we know so she she's like kyoko's like what the hell are you doing you dumbass and sayaka's <laughs> just being snotty and she's like i don't want to owe anything to you to you here you take the grief seed and she throws it to her and she's just being very smirky and self-important it's very mm-hmm. yeah and like as soon as she untransforms she gets exhausted like she starts to collapse like she's obviously pushing herself too hard 
It just flops yeah. over. Like, girl, yeah. you really need I this don't know, thing. Like the, Sayaka's actions through this whole thing mm-hmm. are just basically like, I feel like I should be angry at her or something, mm-hmm. but I just want to cringe because it's just like, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, like, don't like, do that. At, at this point, it's kind of like cringy and annoying. Like, oh, for Christ's sake. By the end of the episode, it's like, oh, this is just sad. This is self harm at this point. Like, yeah. girl, like, like, yeesh. yeah. It really does register as self harm after a yeah. while. Because, like, right now it still looks like she's being stubborn, but by the end it's like, yeah, you know this is going really bad and you're still. Yeah. 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 Even if you haven't, here. even if you haven't put everything together yet. As you watch this episode, you know that it's just not going to end well. Like, there's no way this is going to end well for Sayaka. Something is going to happen here. And unfortunately, that is exactly what happens. (laughs) It sure is. Yeah. Shit does not go well for her. Again, genuinely uh, impressed and surprised that they went with that. So. Yeah. This is, okay, so this is another one of the, like, the the visual, like, cues. And they've done this previously as well. Um, but there's a lot of rain in the episode and like there's umbrella imagery and all this stuff. And I'm guessing this is going to speak to what her witch form looks like as well. Mm -hmm. But because you have all these rain, this rain stuff, you see a lot of like frames of like rain drops in water that, you know, spot like circle out and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's evocative of her, her music, her music spirals. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I like that kind of like, I, I don't even think they connect them immediately at any point in the episode but you still see very yeah. much it's a visual parallel yeah which i really that's one of the things i really liked about it is it's setting that up so well mm-hmm. yeah so after the opening we have a scene with Monica and sayaka sitting in like a bus stop to get away out of the rain and and Monica is so worried about her she's crying she's like I can tell that you're hurting yourself, even if you're turning the pain off. You can't do this to yourself. It's not good for you. And Saika is, you know, being her, being that ugly, bit, uh, bitter, petty side of her, mm-hmm. where she's sh- she's kind of just shrugging off Madoka's attempts to comfort her or give her good advice. And she's just fu- into full self-loathing mode here, where she's yep. like, you know, listen... Uh, I'm a zombie, so how could anything be good for me? Because I'm dead anyway, so how can, you know, how could I hurt myself if I'm dead? And, uh, magical girls exist to kill witches, so unless I kill witches, I'm useless. And it's just very, like... Just, okay, Uh. okay, I, this is, this, this whole, like... hmm? Just pause it. This whole plot element... Like, on, okay, there's another one of those shots. Uh, yeah. This whole plot element kind of fell flat for me and still falls flat for me because I do not, I kind of feel where Kyube is. Like, why is this such a big deal? <laughs> well, I, I mean. The lying sucks. The deception <laughs> sucks. But, you know, like, the last thing I would be thinking is, ooh, I'm a zombie. Ooh, you know, nothing matters. My body is garbage. I Like, okay, so now you carry your soul around. Whatever. Food still tastes good. Wanking still feels good, unless that's changed. <laughs> what if it doesn't? In that case, fuck Cube <laughs> for not telling them about that. But so far as I can tell, there is no like biological side effect aside from good mm. stuff. It's not like oh, food like because that's like a trope of that sort of yeah. thing. Where, like food tastes bad and all that. No, they're fine. I don't see the problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can kind of agree with you to a certain like, point. The only thing I can guess. So I, I want to. You know, I want to believe the best in the people who made the show. So <laughs> I want to maybe just just say to myself, you know, this is Sayaka um, being Sayaka. You know, mm-hmm. like like she's already she, maybe she's just already feeling self-loathing from the wish itself. And this mm-hmm. is what she's projecting that feeling onto. Like, oh, I'm sad because I'm a zombie now. Not because I made a stupid ass decision that I already knew was bad. <laughs> you but know? you know what? Actually, like I just kind of just kind of off the cuff, like trying to parse that as I speak. Um, it is interesting that her bodily autonomy is something that she stresses so much. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm a zombie, I didn't get to like did it. She's so preoccupied with what her body is, and I think that's interesting given the wish she makes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is Which is explicitly about 
preservation of a body. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, her wish is literally just to fix somebody's body. So uh, it does kind of make sense that someone that would think that way would also feel this yeah. more than, like, Kyoko, who grew up in a good, you know, Catholic family. <laughs> Yeah. Not as preoccupied with the sanctity of her body. It's more about her soul anyway. But yeah. I do find it interesting that someone that's so preoccupied with, you know, saving this body is the one that's also like, oh my god, my body is now trash. And mm-hmm. the the if I wanted to be less forgiving to Gen mm. Urabuchi, because we will see later that there is some like potentially sexist undertones in some of what happens in the later episodes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So a, a part of me can also see this as being like, oh, women are obsessed with their bodies, right? So of course they would be mm-hmm. flabbergasted mm-hmm. and devastated by the idea of their souls being removed from their bodies. So I, I don't know if that's what's going on here, but mm-hmm. considering what comes in later, I don't know... It does, I'm curious to see where that goes because yeah, I can see where you're I going. I would imagine I, that there's I, elements of both. Yeah, because I agree with you. Like even when I was watching this, I was like, okay, is it really that big of a deal that your soul is in a in a gem now? But you know, mm-hmm. maybe if you're a self con- bodily self conscious fourteen year old girl, or you th- or you you have a perception of what bodily self conscious fourteen year old mm-hmm. girls are like, maybe that makes more of a sense to be that upset about it. I don't know. Well, it is like a natural, I guess it is a natural conclusion to, you know, the messaging that we give young girls here, and I imagine in Japan pretty much the same way, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, you know, even even if you're not in a, like, religious household, or even near a conservative one, you've heard the messaging that you're, you know, oh, mm-hmm. your body is a wedding dress, you wouldn't want to wear a used wedding dress on your wedding night, you know, that yeah, whole shit. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if we are being told since infancy that this, like, little chunk of skin is literally, like, half the value you have as a woman, I guess at that point, yeah, it does extend to this being, like, your body is actually a huge deal because you've been getting told that nobody ever said anything about your soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, far. so I can I can kind of see that. I could also, being that that is inherently sexist, if that's what it is. do, this is, yeah. yeah. This is going to end up sexist whether it wants to be or not because it's yeah, already like, discussing that I don't topic. know. I don't know entirely how to feel about it because I feel like this is... Would this have happened in a show about men? Would Probably would, not. Would he have written male Which characters being funny. this upset about their soul being removed from their body? I don't think so. Yeah. No, it wouldn't have been written that way, but yeah. I mean, almost invariably, it's dudes that have meltdowns over their bodies not being what they want them to well, be. We're used to our bodies betraying us constantly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm monthly. just thinking of all the times that I've seen on our relationships or something, somebody talking about how, oh no, I told my boyfriend that he wasn't the biggest I'd ever had in bed. He lost his shit. And he loses his mind. Uh-huh. Like... Uh, he didn't even wait for me to elaborate that it was Bad Dragon I was talking about. <laughs> um, but no, oh like, um... There's, where, where, okay, I can't remember where I've heard this, uh, but even, it might even be that, like, Innuendo Studios video series or something. Mm-hmm. But, some like, at some point I've heard, like, the the idea that women in fiction tend to appear in stories where you need the sensitive or basically the weaker perspective to be compelling mm. like women get mm. used in storytelling when the story hinges on a on depicting like the sensitivity and emotional state and weakness of the main character that's when you get a female main character mm-hmm. because that is where the tropes lie if you have a male character that's you know emotionally labile and experiences you actually have to justify that like evangelion yeah. spends half its fucking yeah. real estate justifying that behavior from a boy when yeah. if you chuck some tits on him and thrown him into like Fushigi Yugi or something it would have required literally zero explanation yeah so, that is very fair and I mean like so I can see here that it might be like the kind of story that doesn't work for guys just fun, like just is like a broad fundamental stroke of how stories get structured at this point which is a criticism that's horseshit we can change that but it is like pretty universal yeah. as a way women get used in it i think mm-hmm, yeah so that doesn't necessarily mean that everything that bad. comes out of that is a bad thing but like, it is something that 
horror movies, yeah. for instance. Yes, that's a, a good lot, example. A lot more um, female leads and yeah. stronger female characters. Before. Right. Because you respond stronger to horror mm-hmm. when it's aimed at a woman. Exactly. Like so, you feel more like sympathy. This. You're more likely to feel sympathy for that person. Yeah. 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 Whereas getting the fucking robot Shinji. Yeah. Whereas we're <laughs> exactly. Whereas like Aww. we're like, which is bullshit. Which is me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like, <laughs> someone. Someone saved poor Shinji. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but it is needs, true. Like you know, he needs his boyfriend there to hold his hand. He, he does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's let's continue. Anyway, so yeah. So yeah, so, I'm, I'm looking forward to the sexist shit, but I definitely totally uh, buy I mean, it's we know there. it's going to be there because yeah. you can hardly divorce anything from sexism. No, but no. Yeah. So Sayaka, so Monica's saying all this stuff to Sayaka about how she needs to take care of herself, blah blah blah, and Sayaka does the thing that she said she was not going to do a few episodes ago. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where she's like, okay, well, if if you care so much, why don't you fight them? Because Kube says you'd be the strongest one out of all of us. Yeah, and, this is a know, low fucking blow. Seriously. Yeah, she's oh, being really. Is... Saika is being is really petty. mean, petty. This is the ugly side of her personality. Mm-hmm. So you know, you you. She's like, you won't even. <laughs> you won't even Third. give up your humanity for a friend. It's like, oh come on, that's like that's okay. a little much. And fuck you, this had nothing to do with, with Madoka. Don't, re- like, don't throw this on Madoka. You made this choice on your own, you brat. Yeah, she told, <laughs> like, like, everyone was on the same boat about not doing this, and then you just went and did it. And then you're gonna yell at Madoka for not doing it. Yeah. Like, mm, what a prize. Excellent friendship. <laughs> so, so Sayaka runs off. She's like, don't follow me, and she runs off. And apparently as soon as, as she's running away, she immediately realizes that she's being mean and she regrets yeah. it. Yeah. And But Monica lets her go. And Which, then, then we yeah. get this interesting scene in Homura's house. Okay, now, I, I've got to say, Homura's house looks very much like, actually, if you look at the top part of the building there where it's got all of those many, many roof lines all yeah. at once. That's almost exactly what we saw out of our apartment when we were in Paris for three weeks. Really? So, yeah. yeah and it was a great actually, to the point where when you looked up at it, you actually got a little bit of vertigo. Like, you were looking up higher than you should just because the way that there were so many were stacked on each other. And, it, and then you've got, like, um, the city in the background and you have this, like, really stark difference between, yeah. like, the kind of place that Homer lives and... The entire rest of the setting of the show. Exactly. Because nowhere yeah. else looks like this. Nowhere else looks like it got plucked out of, like, Europe somewhere. So Wait, it's yeah, just, it's, it's, it's really very, interesting in the like, sense, so, like... So much of the rest of the backgrounds in the show are very industrial. Mm-hmm. With very the wind turbines and super, the oil super rigs. Super, super modern. And, yeah. Like, glass everywhere. And then, then and she's got, got this, this very... Which I think is... That, that seems to me like a foreshadowing of what you find out about her later in the episode. Yeah. So yeah, like, her house is fucking weird on the inside. I love too. her house. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of the Utena movie with all the moving blackboards. It does. <laughs> oh my god! Actually, that's probably where they got that. To oh, be honest, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Because okay, so this is house... a Utena reference, and I stand by that one. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so her house is like a big empty white room, like you know when they do photo shoots of celebrities for magazines, and they do yes. it with that white background that has like no seam between the floor and the ceiling yeah the floor and the wall that's what this looks like 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 it's just a big empty white space and there are clock gears hanging from the ceiling and -hmm. there's like a a shadow of a pendulum swinging but we can't see the pendulum it's a bladed one yeah Yeah. and there are all these there are all these cushioned seats arranged in concentric circles and and i mean kyoko and homura are there this is what you would expect from a time witch yeah Yeah, i mean there's some imagery here of both clocks and like cycles or or circles yeah and also running out of time and broken circles because none of the uh chairs are really a full circle or even close Mm -hmm. to one but they do have like do you see where the it's got all the little stools yeah i think probably would correspond to points on the clock like Midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock. Three oh o'clock. yeah, oh yeah. yeah. That's 
Yeah, that definitely so, could work. Yeah, for sure. I can actually see them. Mm-hmm. I can count them. Yeah. yeah. It's very it's it it's very exactly what you would expect from from the time witch and also completely fucking unrealistic. This is like Utina setting energy. <laughs> Yeah. Like, this makes, this has no, no connection whatsoever to reality. There is no way that this can, can exist. This just, this is not a a room that exists in it. Yeah. No, it's so strange. And (laughs) and even though there's no walls, there's, like, on one quote-unquote wall, Humura Mm -hmm. has all these, like, the only way I can describe them is almost, like, tabs in a computer browser or, like, windows on a PC. All these Mm -hmm. windows open of all these notes and about mm-hmm. Walpurgis Knot. So she's here with Kyoko to talk about Walpurgis Oh, uh, you know what basically. it is? It's the detective's wall. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, actually. With all is. the yeah. pictures and all of the strings. That's what yeah. that thing is. It's her detective wall. Because it's all covered yeah. with, like, news articles and bits and pieces about Walpurgis Knot and pictures of this witch. And mm-hmm. dee 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 So, yeah. She's, she's detectiving. She's, and she's done some investigating. So, she, so she's explaining to Kyoko, like, Okay, so here's where Walpurgis Knock is going to, most likely going to appear. Mm-hmm. And and Kyoko's like, and how do you know that? And <laughs> Homer just says statistics. <laughs> yeah, she's just like so, brushing that off our my girl. <laughs> so Don't she's like, answer. and so Kyoko's like, and where do you get your statistics from? And Kyube shows up and he basically says, I'd also like to know that. And she's just like, be gone, thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kyoko wants nothing to do with Literally. him. <laughs> She's just so impressed. I love but her. Kyube is really there to say that that Sayaka is deteriorating and that a curse, quote unquote, is growing inside her. So when I was watching this, I think that immediately pinged something Clicked. in my brain like, oh no, I know what's yeah. going to happen here. Yeah. Well, there's also in the in the pictures, like in the background, I I like hunted this down to pause it, and like all of the pictures that are clearly supposed to be this Walpurgis knocked witch, like you have like on one like she's like split down the the center, and on one side is like the shape of like uh just like a normal like a woman a woman like a nude woman almost, and on the other side is like a dress, and it's like a poofy dress, like a princessy dress, and it's very evocative of the one Madoka has, mm. but it's very clearly like it it radiates magical girl and it's very we should actually find a a close-up of that it's it's very like if if you hadn't already picked up the cue that cube left and everybody else it's very like oh Mm -hmm. she was a a magical girl like it's it's very it makes it very obvious in the sense of like again it's foreshadowed well so yeah, so Homura explains to Kyoko that her Sayaka's soul gem has become too tainted. And mm-hmm. if it isn't purified soon, you know, she's a goner, basically. Um, and Hang this, on, yeah. Let's just this... run it back, because I want to show sure. you, actually, that so that you can include it in the video. Yeah, sure. I mean, unless you think that it would be too spoilery at this point. I don't think so. It, no. it's Well, I mean, it's literally what's in the episode, so. Yeah, yeah that's but... true. But, you know, they don't really expect that you're going to catch all of this on first watch or anything yeah. also what the fuck is with the way cube walks right there like what the fuck into the shadows yeah but yeah there's like, there it is like right there like you'll, yes it zooms there's in a, there's okay a better, there's but a yeah that one, shot because there's that it, one there's please. that one actually okay. it repeats like one two three yeah four. It, it repeats that one that times. one repeats that one repeats so she's got like a bunch of the same images going around on her little like uchina chalkboard there <laughs> so. yeah I, I, I love this room. Yeah. I think she just wants um, an excuse to run the room. <laughs> <laughs> Would one of you guys like to bring us through the next day at school section here in the notes? Sure. Go right ahead. I don't right. know if I am quite up to it today. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to skip Sorry, to the next I'm, episode. I actually just had a minor surgery done, so I'm kind of oh, no. out of it. <laughs> Aw. Are you okay? Did they give you yeah. painkillers? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm Okay. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Nothing says Madoka like Percocet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So in the next episode, I guess they're back in, like, English class or whatever. And they have that, like, neat thing where if somebody's absent, the whole table is missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is very... I feel like that's, like, sick shaming or something. <laughs> sick shaming? <laughs> like, yeah. just having the whole thing be absent just feels, like, passive-aggressive. Like, this is what you get for calling it sick, you brat. I think you're sensitized <laughs> to that from work. I might be, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, let's see. Where are we? 
Wait, what are we doing? Oh, we don't we we don't spend long in the class. We, we go right, right to uh, yeah to Hitomi and you know what's his face Kyosuke. I was just gonna, I was gonna go straight to fuck boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could call him that. I, I yeah, I could. And they're walking home, and and she's following him, even though that's not where she lives. And it's clearly like the setup for how she's going to disclose that that she's a lurb and all of that. Every time he shows up on the screen, I just get like, I just start flashing back to the conversation we had about misery and Annie Wilkes and all of that. <laughs> but they are, they are not on a bridge, one, and there is a waterfall behind them, which is that whole like Sayaka imagery, I think. Yeah, the um, water imagery. Yeah, totally. And um, I actually kind of like. She's such a good contrast to Sayaka in that sense because like she seems very Hitomi? like she wouldn't mm-hmm. Hitomi. Yeah, okay. she seems very much like she's not the sort that would want to, like, go kill witches, but she does have the balls to go tell the guy she likes that she likes him. Yeah, what were Which... you saying earlier about this being, like, this is the more cowardly thing in a magical girl sense yeah. or in, something in, like in, that? Yeah, like, you would know this better than me, but, like, in anime, at sure. least broadly speaking, it seems to me like, well, you have that person that, you know, is willing to fight but won't disclose their feelings to the person they love. And then you have the person that will disclose their feelings but might not want to fight. And, like, in anime speak, it's the person that would choose to fight that's the coward. Mm-hmm. Like, it, and that, I mean, I guess that's a sensible message to send little girls. Like, you really need to be open with your feelings and willing to share and tell the boy you like that you like him or nothing will ever happen. Mm-hmm. So, like, in that sense, Sayak is being positioned as the one that's the coward mm-hmm. compared to Hitomi, who... Yeah. Doesn't seem like she's a fighter, but she does have the nerve she's... to be she risks rejection. Sayaka chooses to do something that she can either die or win at. Yeah. She's not risking rejection though, and that's yeah. the harder thing. The difference between them is insecurity and immaturity, right? Totally. So S- Sayaka convinces herself that she's she has the courage <laughs> to fight monsters. But, yep, but- in reality, she's she doesn't have the courage to even tell her childhood friend that she likes him. Yep. Um, and like, and then we jump to like this, like we're we're seeing them sit, like her. Uh, he told me he was on a bench and they're talking clearly, like sorting their shit out. And at the beginning of the scene, when I first watched it, I'm like, this has some Phantom of the Opera energy, and she's watching. Them. <laughs> Why? Sure, <laughs> the fucking up. <laughs> And sure enough, you know, Sayaka is like behind oh, a fucking pillar. Oh, yeah, yes, I know. What you watching mean. these two, <laughs> Sayaka is listening to them yeah, talk to each other, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and like Hitomi and Kyosuke seem to be getting along just fine because they're yeah, like they're... smiling and chatting. This is going fantastic for them. <laughs> Not so fantastic for Sayaka. No, Sayaka is <laughs> falling into like her little water to be imagery, drowning. And... She's like literally looks like she's drowning, and it's a that's jump a cut nice... to her like smashing the shit out of things. Cause yeah, that's, that's a what nice you do when cut you're angry. because it's um, it very much likens her drowning herself in her witch killing. To yeah, her... you drown yourself in your work when you're yeah. depressed. Yeah, right. And if your work is bad for you, that is a downward spiral that's very hard to get out of. Mm-hmm. And then Homer <sighs> so shows the up because <laughs> we just can't leave it alone. Well, she kind of can't because she needs to slap some sense into the stomach. Yeah, I mean, so this scene is interesting. It, an attempt gets made here. Homer, like, tries to explain to Sayaka she does not have the luxury of just killing familiars. And yeah. she then offers her a grief seed. Like, here, just, just, here, here's some soap. Wash that thing up. And she just kicks it away because at this point, she's in her downward spiral and Mm-hmm. This is the self. This is the self harmingest of self harms. Like so also has started listening to Nine Inch Nails. Yes. Yeah. Also, oh. Hoda is the worst person to be doing this because we already know that Sayaka does not trust her at all. Nope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is not going to work. <laughs> I feel like she feels like she has to try at least. Yeah. But yeah. Like she doesn't seem very hopeful that it's going to. To be honest, no. I'm not sure so, why Homura didn't just tell her, like, "Hey, you're turning into a witch." Please stop that. Because well, we, we'll see what happens when in the future when some, when that yeah, p- potential but, 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 opportunity comes up. Yeah, because um, yeah. like we, we discussed this when we were reviewing the episode, and like on one hand, it seems like it would make a lot more sense to just be like, "Bitch, you're turning into a witch. That's going to go bad for you. Please 
do something else. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, like, a lot of the decisions Sayaka makes, like, I mean, um, that Homura makes, like, like, Yasha's mentioned it's like she's playing chess, but she's playing chess with somebody else's decision. Because, mm-hmm. like, she mm-hmm. seems to be trying to create a circumstance where Madoka will or will not do a thing. And at that point, like, I feel like she's thinking if I tell her this, she's going to go tell her this and it's going to change the mm-hmm. outcome in some way. Like, Homer is very, uh, she does not like to disclose information and I get the impression that she doesn't do that for similar reasons to Cube. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Like, they- do you remember right after it got revealed that the soul gems had your soul in it? Um, yes, and she says that nobody and, believes me. Yeah, her and Monica had that conversation on the roof at school, and she was like, would you have believed me even if I told you? Because when I do tell people, they don't believe me, and it doesn't get me anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Which I think, I think is this is a little bit of, of a different situation, though. I really do, because, I mean, this is a process that's happening to yeah. Sayaka, and even if she didn't believe her right away, she could probably tell that something bad is happening and maybe if she's not actually turning into a witch then something you know something is clearly not going the way it should here okay but like like to in in Sayaka's defense because i feel like i'm constantly shitting like <laughs> while I will, you are i am <laughs> but but i don't necessarily think she would have been any more inclined to listen to homer and now because this is how depression works well, yeah. yeah. It's the constant shifting of goalposts as to what's normal and acceptable. Mm-hmm. So she, as far as Sayak is concerned, she's not, you know, spiraling down the drain. She doesn't see where this is. She doesn't realize how bad she's doing. She doesn't understand what's going on. So to her, it would still sound like Homer is just talking some goddamn nonsense. Because at this point, her your her goalposts have shifted so much that dead inside eyes and feeling no pain is like, well, that's that's normal. You normalize something to the point where uh, an objective person's input sounds like complete nonsense to you anyway. Yeah, that is literally exactly what she does here, and she does it through her clinging even tighter to her really rigid morals. Yep. She's like, She's like, you know, listen, I'm going to be a different kind of magical girl. I'm not going to screw anyone over or take anybody for granted. And I'm not going to associate with anyone who does do that. Like, I'm going to be as as morally pure about this as I can. Mm -hmm. And Homer says, okay, well, if you do that, you're going to die. And Saika says, well, I don't care. Because if I can't fight witches anymore, then I'm useless anyway. So who cares? Uh Uh-huh. And her drawing Homer, her face really funny here. I don't know what it is about the proportions of her face are just completely off. Anyway. And yeah. Sayaka calls Homer out too. Like, she's like, listen, also I can tell that you actually don't want to help me. Like, you just, you're very empty whenever you speak. I can tell that you're mm-hmm. being fake. And, mm-hmm. um... And, That's fine, like, though. Yeah, and That's Homer fine. is like, Look. Homer is like, you know what? You're right. I don't give a shit if you die or not. I just I don't mean, want you to make up Madoka upset. So if you know what, if you're gonna keep making Madoka upset, I'm just gonna kill you right now. And she like, I she mean, holds, she holds up her hand. It seems entirely reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Big mood, I guess. I mean, Homura has said multiple times, like Sayaka Miki is hopeless, and she might as well be dead, and you need to just forget about her. So. Yep. It's it's like that moment when she grabbed her her soul gem off the truck. Like, should I really be doing this? Because she's doomed mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, at the last second, Kyoko shows up. Yep. And, and Kyoko does Kyoko. Yeah. <clears throat> pins Homer's arms to her sides and allows Saika to run away. And she's like, oh, okay, if I hold your arms like this, then you can't do that thing that you do, huh? But instead, Homura just makes, like, a flash grenade, grenade. and runs away. <laughs> and I like that the grenade, like, you see, like, a mechanism for it, which goes against magical girl language. I guess, yeah. And it, yeah, like, she she actually pulls the pin. There's, like, nothing yeah. magical. It's not, it's not ornamental. It's not, like, a magical-looking yeah. grenade. It's just a grenade. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's just interesting, because that, that kind of contrast tends to be very, like... Mm-hmm. And it, it it just kind of follows in the way that it otherizes her from the other magical girls. Like she's gotten this shit more organized. She's she's incorporated actual flash grenades into her magical girl routine. I mean, 
Which, why not? <laughs> why not? Yeah. There, she, she's not going to waste her time with any Tiro finales here. She's just going to yeah. shoot you oh. in the face. Yeah. And the reason yeah. she doesn't waste her time with Tiro finales is she does not want to hunt witches. Yeah. No. Like, you, you see her use her energy, like, at times, but she's very sparing about it. She doesn't waste a lot of time fighting. She avoids it where she can. She's saving her yeah. energy so that she can manipulate time. Yeah, and she doesn't want to kill witches to preserve herself, so mm-hmm. it follows that she would learn to do other things as well. Mm-hmm. And we know that she's preoccupied with this Walpurgis Knox situation, too. Yeah, she's so, got other shit on her mind. Yeah, she could also be doing, because Kyube has said, like, when you have a lot of grief seeds in reserve, you can use as much mag- magic as you want. So it's mm-hmm. possible she's just trying to conserve everything she can for yeah, like yeah. an upcoming battle with, with that whole situation. I mean, gee, the she's, one that we saw in the first of all. She's got, she's got <laughs> resource management skills. Yeah. So That's now we girl. come to the train scene. <sighs> okay, I have a question <laughs> so, about this scene. Yeah. Okay. Do you know when this conversation happened? Because I know that, I can't remember who said this, but I know somebody said that this was an actual conversation that Gen Urobuchi overheard. Yeah. Do you know when this happened? I don't know, um, like, when this happened to Gen Urobuchi. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't tell you. Apparently, however, he was actually sitting on a train somewhere and overheard people on the train, like, in his vicinity having this kind of a conversation. Mm-hmm. This is what because I became the feel, motive for this whole thing. I basically. feel like this is basically the um basically the theme of the entire series yeah. right here. Yeah. Is is like Well, like you said before, if this is if if, if Madoka's a pearl, this was the grain of Yeah, of this sand. was I feel like this was the grain of sand that caused Madoka to yeah. come into being. Like It's not a pretty one, it's it's an ugly one. Yeah. But it's just, like, there's so much, um, there's so many things that have been kind of broken out and changed into the themes of the series that I would not be surprised if this is where the idea for the series came from. Mm-hmm. Why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about what they're talking about here and how, that, <laughs> like, what you mean by that? Yeah. Well... I mean, the the running theme in this conversation is one of dehumanization and misogyny. It's two guys that are talking about how they treat their girlfriends, and they're talking about them basically as if they're animals. Yeah. With the knowing. language is very like, yeah, gross. they're stupid hoes. Like, yeah, you got to treat them like they're stupid dogs or something. Is the mm-hmm. quote on the screen at the moment? Yeah, like, you can't give them money because they're just going to spend it because they they're too yep. stupid to know what to do with. Money. like it's very mm-hmm. misogynistic it's like brutal like it's it it i don't even remember if they actually but it's it's very like man you just gotta smack them into shape and yeah then when yeah. it's time to dump them they're total twats it's very like and it's very it it doesn't like the tone is so different from everything else that we've seen in the anime so far yeah like there's nothing leading up to this. There it comes is. out of fucking nowhere. These it does. Are these... No, okay. I was about to ask if these are the first adult men we have seen so far in the whole series. No, because we saw Madoka's they aren't. dad. We they saw aren't. Madoka's dad and we saw Kyosuke's parents and Kyosuke's doctor. So mm-hmm. technically, no. However, considering we're on episode eight and we can name the number of adult male characters on one hand so far... Yeah, mm-hmm. and almost all of the adult characters you mentioned are relatives. Yeah. yeah. None of them in any way interact with the girls in so- insofar as, like, the expectation that, say, Sayaka would have as to what her future dealing with men will look like. Right. So, mm-hmm. so these are young men who are not yeah. family members. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not a good look. <laughs> yeah, and this does this fall into the, that category of conversations background characters have about relationships that has kind of cropped up? I feel so like far? it does, yeah. Yeah, yeah do, it does. Because it's, it's really, like, I don't know, what I can't get over about it is just how different it is and how utterly, like, relatable it is to the major themes of the series like at least in in i'm trying to figure out how to put this exactly basically the way i 
have been conceiving of this series pretty much from the beginning is um, almost as a punishment, Mm -hmm. believe it or not. That basically the idea on the author's behalf was to rope people in to make them care by any means and then to punish them for caring Mm -hmm. afterwards. It's a call out post. (laughs) Yeah. And this yeah. is like this is basically like that entire thing crystallized into one scene, right? Yeah, here. like oh, oh, you're watching a magical girl mm-hmm. anime at two a.m. that has the main character in a BDSM outfit in the opening, and she's this hugging one herself was naked. You. Well, yeah. here we are in episode eight, and you, viewer, you, young adult male, are sitting on the train talking about what you really think about women. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's it's, exactly. it's it, it, yeah, it's it took eight episodes of framing. Yeah. To sell this scene such mm. that you can see it from Sayaka's point of view. Right. And you still have to, like, basically have Sayaka be a broken human being to even make that work. Mm-hmm. But in that sense, it is very, like, you know, you spent these eight episodes getting used to these girls, and, and now it's suddenly you're shown what those girls see go. when they look at you. That's right. what I was thinking. This is the thesis statement for the yeah. series. Yeah. This is what this, this is. This is, like, the... Because, like, like you said, like, all of these scenes up to this point where they talk about romance and stuff, it's among mm-hmm. the girls, and it's all very, like, ah, oh, you know, oh, are you gonna date this boy? It's very, you and know, even generically when it's juvenile and Even when it's something and... like the teacher having problems yes. with her, her yeah. boyfriend or whatever, it's, it's all kind of... It's very like, lighthearted and still. And, yeah. And yeah. then you switch perspectives, and it's like, oh, this got dark, literally, because it is now literally in black and white, in dark shadows, very similar mm-hmm. to... The opening sequence of the yeah, show. Actually, that was something that Vana pointed out when we were watching it, when we were reviewing it earlier, was that in some shots it looks like all of the buildings in the background that the train is passing by are, are already ruined. trashed. Like, not yeah. in this particular shot, but like once you once it pulls out and mm-hmm. it gets a little bit further from them, then yeah, it, it's one of those things that's a combination of lack of focus and lack of detail, but they do look like they're ruined. Yeah, and it's just, like this whole uh, this conversation is like so bad. You you are really good at dumping hoes. I envy you. Yeah, mm-hmm. <sighs> and so, so Sayaka gets up and she's like, "Hey, who that girl you're talking about? Why don't you tell me some more about her? Why don't you, why don't you tell me?" About her life and her name. And, oh. and these guys are like, who are you? Who the fuck are, like are you? Middle school. Mm-hmm. Again, Sayaka cannot tell the boys she likes that she likes him. Mm-hmm. But, but she she'll straight up this. confront these adult men in, yeah. alone in a, yeah. in a subway car and be like, hey, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Well, Which, it's because it goes to her morals. Like, when it yep. comes to her morals, she has no yeah. hesitation. It's true. Coming There's right out and seen. saying what she what she feels. The ruined buildings yeah. in the background. Yeah, actually, I can see it now. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just, I don't know. And she's trying really to, like, ex- like, explain to them, like, the perspective of the girls that are dumping them. And she's, like, she starts it, but it's clear very quickly that she knows this is not going to work. And she just devolves into, you know, what am I, what am I even doing this for? Mm. And it's, like, it's, it's cut with, like, uh the train breaking Mm -hmm. because of course and there's been like a lot of imagery around this scene of like trains splitting off in one direction or the other Mm -hmm. and then the like final shot is a train splitting off yeah on one side of the tracks and she just gets consumed with this like witchy ass black green sparkly okay so Mm -hmm. so multiple characters have said that a witch does not become a witch unless they have killed a few people first Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Sayaka definitely killed those guys. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, she fucking murdered those guys. <laughs> she murdered the shit yeah. out of those guys. Like that, it, it's, and it's, good it's, riddance. <laughs> yeah, that, like that train is probably just bloody and yeah. It, like I don't. It doesn't look good. Who knows exactly what she did? But like, I just feel like the subtext here is that she exploded Absolutely. with with fury at these guys and and murdered them and like killed them. So well, now I mean, she's that's... killed humans. You yeah. know? There you go. Yeah. Right, but it's righteous rage, which I suppose is probably often how that goes down with the magical probably, girls. Probably, yeah. Honestly, probably. Which yeah. is not, which is not a good because I feel like this is probably very representative of how this usually goes down. Mm-hmm. As far as the magical girls turning into witches, 
At which point it is constantly that they're having an existential crisis about whether the world is worth saving. <laughs> Which yes. is like, uh, that's, yeah. uh, oh, I have I have a little bit of interesting mm. lore to tell you guys now that we know about this spoiler, but let's leave it to the end. Okay. Okay, okay so the next scene is it, they're outside. Madoka's still looking for Sayaka, and she's stopped at like a park with a nice fountain in it. And she, she comes across Kyubei. And she's like, you know, oh, I, one one piece of one exchange between them that I thought was interesting and really mm-hmm. goes goes towards the kind of person that Madoka is. Kyubei's like, oh, I guess you're mad at me too now, huh? And Madoka's like, if I was, would you change Sayaka back? Like, like she's she doesn't even <laughs> she doesn't care about being mad at Kyubei. No, she just yeah. she just cares about finding a solution to the, the situation, you know. Yeah, she, she really doesn't oriented. feel. Yeah, she doesn't feel any fury towards him, which is interesting because I would, and everybody else is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Kube says, you know, I can't do anything to change Saika back. Madoka says, well, Saika told me that uh, I would be the strongest magical girl ever. Is that true? And Kube's like, yeah, it's not just true. Your powers would be like Insane. infinite. Like you would be a god. You would turn into a god if I made you a magical girl. Yeah, he literally sells her that, and she's like, "Yeah, but can I say something?" <laughs> Which, yeah, she's you know, like, "Is admirable. she's like okay? Well, in that case, could I do things that you couldn't do? Like, could I save Sayaka then?" And I oh, mean, another another thing is that she's like, "Well, if I if I had made a contract, maybe Sayaka wouldn't have." And to Kyuubei's credit, he's like, "Oh no, Sayaka is responsible for her own wish. It's not your Which, fault." You know, valid, yeah. mm-hmm. valid. That not is that the most reasonable thing he said recently. But. Yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, okay, well, if, if I could do things that even you couldn't do and I could help Sayaka, then I want to be a magic... Uh, uh, oh, and then oh, oh, all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> Kyube Q- gets shot up with like 10 bullet holes directly to the face. <laughs> I okay. mean, all right, we're going to pause here really, really quick. <laughs> okay. um, because so the shot that I have paused is like right before that. And he's like, oh, if you were to release your power, blah, 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 blah. But it's a very strange shot because it's shot from below, like upshot, which is villain shot, but whatever. But like he's on this park bench and the park bench is kind of curved because of the, the camera angle. It's like a and fisheye lens. It's yeah. a fisheye lens onto a star field. Yeah. And star field has red stars and it has blue stars on it. And in my brain, I have decided that means he is an alien. <laughs> yeah. I don't. That I'm, that is this is the kind of shot that is just so not a mistake. Yeah, basically, you wouldn't include this kind of shot if yeah. it didn't mean something. Especially I mean, not with having the detail of red yeah, stars and at, blue stars. At this point, I don't think it's a huge spoiler because you still don't know anything about him. But I will say, like, you're basically right. Like, you're gonna find out more details about that. <laughs> but but like in the same way that. Um, because we know Gen Urobuchi wrote Saya no Uta, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Saya in that game is like an eldritch monster who yeah. looks like a little lowly girl. Yeah. And and he's kind of playing with the same idea here, where Kube is just like an an, an unearthly being who, who is here but yeah. doesn't understand humans and like Totally. Maybe, yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's a little bit although you're not fucking Kube in this story. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. no. But it I is mean, but it is totally like that that I love that shot. Yeah. yeah no, I fucking love shot. that shot because that is definitely what that shot is getting at. Yeah. And I mean you could totally just pass it and not but because I'm like a space nerd and villain nerd, I'm being all semantic about it. There but. there are <laughs> a lot of aren't there are a lot of shots of the sky in the background in this scene, really. There yeah, are, it's but not that, one that one especially because he looms over it, and it's mm-hmm. also, like, zooming in on him, it's doing that whole, like, it's just very, like, yeah, it's because he's talking from his point of view, which is fucking outer space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here's so, another space shot. Another one, yep. Yeah. Like, and then it gets cloudy when he gets shot up, by the way. Oh, really? Because a, a moment later when we're talking, oh, there's even, like, a star field in his eyes, oh, okay, alien. But after he gets <laughs> shot up and and um, Homer shows up, the shots get uh, when you see the sky, it's cloudy out. Mm. So, mm. which so, is a neat. So detail. yeah, Homer shows up and kills Cube. Good. <laughs> she just Ma- kills the shit out of it. Madoka starts crying even for Cube. She's like, she's like, you didn't have to kill him. I mean, and, yeah. And Homer it's not like gets it's mad stop at her. him any. 
<laughs> See, and, well, oh, I love how they did that too with the, him getting shot because uh, I didn't notice this the first time, but like you see the fountain and the water has paused mm-hmm. and then it cuts to Q-Bay and he goes from like one frame of being normal to the next frame of just being shot full of holes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and Homer drops the gun, but clearly she did not just fire off six rounds. It literally happened in an instant. So, like, you know. Inst- yeah, instantaneously. Yeah. Which is like really neat. I liked, I liked how yeah. they did that. She does mm-hmm. not have, she does not have teleportation powers. She has time stopping powers. Yep. Yep. Which which, which can look looks, exactly the same. Yeah. So. On the outside, looks like teleportation or looks like instantaneous movement mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So is Homer is like Maruko. Why do you always do this? Why do you? Why are you so self sacrificial? You need to stop thinking that you don't matter. You know. You need to to start thinking about all the people who are fighting for you. Stop acting like such a dumbass. Think about all people who would be upset if you're if you died. And like she's. She's getting emotional. This is like the first time we see her like crying, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Basically, and she's, she's just sobbing. Like... Yeah, and she's obviously talking about herself. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Like thinking of the people, think of the people who care about you, aka me. Me. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely me. Yeah, I know that's. And Madoka, to like... her credit, she's not a completely historic dumbass. She's like, have we met before? Then, because like. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. This is, this is escalating a lot for the amount that we know each other. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like this is really, really well handled in terms of, like, the, the emotional content of Homura's speech there. Mm-hmm. Like, you know it. You have known it all along that Homura was mostly concerned with Madoka and mostly, yeah. like, most if not all of her concern was about keeping Madoka alive and safe and all of that. Yep. And to just have it completely come out of nowhere with all of these emotions. Mm-hmm. But that's how that kind of thing works perfect. when you're that no, kind of person. That's what I mean. It's like, is it's it's like perfect. You know, it's perfect. Restraint, restraint, restraint. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And it just all snaps at once. She's not that's, like a leaking faucet the way. Yeah. That's what that's what the otaku call gap moe. Really? Yes. Gap moe. Gap moe, what? where there's She's she's there's a gap in between her super serious unemotional self and then she has this moment where she's super emotional. Oh. Yeah. Another another example would be like a really big tough burly guy who's who has a tiny little kitten as a pet. Uh, like there's a gap between those two things okay. and like that that weird contrast is like what makes yeah. them appealing. Yeah. Continues to be Asha. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Are you Gap Moe, Yasha? No, she's totally Gap <laughs> I can't speak to this. <laughs> mm, please explain, Vana. I need to know how Yasha is Gap Moe. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just, it's just the kind of, like, character detail that I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's the character that Yasha likes. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that's, that's still, that's still Yasha's favorite see, character. Now for she's sure. covering for me. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking about oh. Moe. <laughs> but yeah, so she has this like meltdown and Madoka runs away and she's just like, you know, on the ground being all fucked up and Kyubei comes back like, he yeah. just shows up and he shows up in his shadow and he has like glowing red eyes like he's a fucking berserking Evangelion or something. <laughs> I mean, he, he might be. <laughs> yeah, he does. Do you guys remember when he he um, created Psycho Soul Gym, where like her shadow was moving around them? Yes, mm-hmm. it does the same thing here. Where yeah, like, except like, this time it's his. Yeah, it's his shadow, and it's like it's like being cast across the ground, but it's like moving at the same time. Didn't we I like notice it. earlier something something Cuba can control the way light hits him or something? Well, we were reviewing. Well, we were like, yeah. To that you know what it is? You know, I I just realized what he keeps reminding me of with all of this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, manipulation of shadows around you is not a fucking strange theatrical trope at all. Yeah, it is, however, when you see a lot in horror and especially with Dracula, because it feeds generally on young women. Yeah. 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 So So Cuba is actually Drac. He's he's actually Dracula. Live action right. Netflix version, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. <laughs> yes. Please Get dress to Gary Oldman up. Please cast as Gary Oldman as Cuba. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the overlap between cute fuzzy Cuba and sexy vampires. <laughs> I mean, Gary Oldman wasn't a sexy vampire, yeah. though. <laughs> but That's he was true. framed to be. 
after a while. Yeah. yeah. yeah but anyway, and, like, Jubei comes back and eats the old Jubei, which is just so, like, I of mean, course he does. Sure. Monstrous and disgusting. Con- I don't know. Yeah. Conservation pretty, of energy. Yeah. yeah. I thought Stuff. that was pretty sensible. You know. And then he's just, like, rolling around and acting super, super cat-like. Which he does a lot in this episode, but he doesn't do nearly as much up to this point. No, mm-hmm. no, he. Really but like, because I've, I've, I've never seen him like rolling around and licking his paws, and he's just yeah. It's I almost like know, he's smug about it. I a want little to bit. know what they watched before they animated him because it doesn't look quite cat-like. It, like, just the way that he moves and all of that, especially in this episode, he doesn't. There's something very off about the way he moves. It's almost more like a hamster. <laughs> you know what it is? Cube is Gapnoe. Cube <laughs> is Gapnoe? Oh dear. Because he's he's cute, he's a cute and adorable little kitty cat. And he's also taunting Homura about how he's going to turn Madoka into a magical girl and there's nothing she could do about it. And... Yeah, pretty much. He's smug. <laughs> That's why he's smug. He's in he's that's actually the most personality I think he's had yet. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so. I mean, he's very, you know, oh boy, this is some evil energy. And so, but actually in his behavior, he's always just been very, like, straightforward and he's manipulative, but he's not emotionally attached to anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, him rolling around while he says she's going to be a magical girl, what, whether you like it or not, is like the closest thing to a personality I've seen thus far. Yeah. And it's him being smug, which, I mean, that mood. Fits. That's mm-hmm. fair. That's yeah, nice. like <laughs> like he is openly taunting. Yeah, mm-hmm. Homura in this scene, like yeah, like, the gloves are off here. Like he's not pretending to be on her side anymore. Nope. Yeah, which I mean, fair because she's killed him like twice. <laughs> yeah. I can understand why he may have some sort of antagonistic feelings for her. No. Yeah. But, it, it, so yeah. Homer is like, I know what you really are, and I know what you're planning, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to stop you from turning Monica into a magical girl. Cube, yep. or should I say incubator? So that's I like his it. real name. Yeah. I get it, get it. Cause Cube, and then he looks like a fucking uterus and fallopian tubes again. Yep, and yeah. the soul gems wah, are egg shaped. The soul yeah. gems are egg shaped, and they hatch into witches. Yep. Yeah. You know, you know, the whole thing where his like ear tentacles like went towards Sayaka was less creepy when I thought of them as tentacles than when I'm now thinking of them as fallopian tubes. Now this is creepy and I'm burst. Yeah. <laughs> yep. babies. Uh. Yep. So we I... close out the episode on a big a big scene. Big reveal. Yeah. So Kyoko a, finally finds Sayaka sitting in a train station in the dark. Presumably, the audience that. knows she probably killed those guys. Yeah, there's just a blood smear somewhere else. And yeah. she's got that billboard The billboard behind her, behind her has, like, witchy. figures in the rain with umbrellas, so you still have that, like, rain imagery all around her, and it looks like witch script. Yeah, there's, I think there's, there's some speculation that this, that billboard is also um, something related to time travel. Like, if you look really closely at it, it's like maybe you can kind of see, like, a time split off of another timeline or something. Like, some kind of drawing sort of depicting that idea. Okay. Hmm. Like, before Kyoko had this argument of, like, you know, you can't create any good without there being an equal measure. You know, law of... Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. And she's not, like... Like, she's taking that argument and agreeing with her, but the conclusion she's coming to is completely different and so destructive and it's like it's very mm-hmm. demonstrative of how you can give two people the same information and the depressed person is going to go this way yeah like kyoko looks at it like well it, it you know if you wish for something good something bad happens in equal measure so you might as well just wish for things for yourself because yep. you know you're doing this for yourself anyway etc cetera, etc cetera. sayaka's mm-hmm. like sayaka s- sees that and says well then what's the point because i'm not actually doing any good yeah. You know what it is? Have you ever seen that nihilism meme where it's like what people think nihilism looks like and it's like a sad emo pe- person yeah. and then it with the like nothing nothing matters. Yeah. Oh, and then the yeah. next picture is what nihilism actually looks like and it's like this 90s punk kid with his thumb up like nothing yeah. matters. Yeah. <laughs> like a thumbs up. Yeah. These Woo! two are these two nihilists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they came to the same conclusion but boy did they frame it differently and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyoko doesn't seem to entirely see what's coming either. She's like, uh, what? Yeah, and, and it, like even someone like Kyoko 
is somebody who was selected by Kyube who would not have seen this coming. Yeah. You know? It's because and Kyoko's actually a good girl, okay? Yeah, yeah I she don't, is. Kyoko clearly has no idea that this is how witches get made. Yeah. Yeah. So, Saika has this great line, um, for all the happiness you wish for someone, someone else gets cursed with equal misery. That's how mm-hmm. it is for magical girls, and that's how it is for me. So, it's just... She's completely yep. given up. Like yeah. she's, she's just completely given up. So she's crying, and one of her teardrops falls and hits her soul gem, and it explodes into this massive like storm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see it basically transform into the shape of a grief seed. Yep. Which I I absolutely love that entire sequence. That's an amazing sequence. It's Especially really well because, done. Especially because like the shot right before when she's crying, she's she's smiling yeah and it's just got that oh it feels so good to give up now yeah yeah Yeah, like i'm tired i'm done with this now and it's like it's super sad like i really i really liked that whole and then the way the grief seed just kind of like pops because it keeps like it transforms and like bursts yeah like crunching bursts into the grief seed i mean it it really explodes and kyoko is like holding on to like a a railing rail just to mm-hmm. just to not be blown away by it, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's a really violent explosion when she when her yeah. soul gem transforms. And the final shot of the episode this is shit. Kube standing on top of a building, looking over the city with the moon in the background, and he's like, you know, since young females in this world are called girls, it makes sense to call you the people who eventually become witches, magical girls. Which, what is that, that? That does not work at all in yes, English. Yes, it does. Eh. Oh well, no, not in English, but yeah. yeah. What Do was the, what was the explanation that we got for? I can only half remember. So Maho Shoujo mm-hmm. is magical girl. Mm-hmm. Yes, Majo yeah. is witch. Yeah. So he's saying it makes sense to call you magical girls because you're going to become Ma Jo. Yeah. It's like a contraction. Yeah. yeah. Like the Once. ma and the ma and the jo are the same kanji in ma oh, are they? ho sho jo. Yeah, like are the ma and the, the jo are the same Damn. ones. Yeah. I didn't know if it was just like an audio like a sound pun or no, something, I'm pretty, but yeah. No, I'm pretty sure it's the same. I could be wrong, but I'm like wow. 90% sure that they're the same kanji. I feel like that's in and of itself a comment on the language. <laughs> yeah. Like if you really <laughs> wanted to dig into it a bit. Yeah. But it is but it is very like yeah, it makes sense to call them magical girls. Mm-hmm. When pared down, their fate is still to be a witch. That's yeah, you're just—they're just immature witches, so they're yeah. girls instead of, yep, instead of magical women, aka, because that's what magjo means. The first, the first kanji is magic, and the second kanji is woman, so that means witch. And then maho shojo, maho is like a the word for magic instead of just the kanji, so that's maho. And then shoujo is young woman. So it really is just a contraction. Like, you just shorten it, it becomes the word witch. Oh. So that, that is our sense. big episode here. So many revelations Oof. in this episode. Much. Mm. Extremely much. Yeah, like, we learn... First of all, we learn what the deal is with Homura, right? We have... Yeah, we I have, mean, And we time. have the... Yeah, we have the first big humanizing emotional moment with Homura too where she just Mm -hmm. she Mm -hmm. finally breaks down and loses her cool I mean wouldn't you Madoka is really really bent and determined (laughs) that she's gonna be a magical girl and Homura is Madoka is a sweet sweet dumb person (laughs) yes (laughs) I love her although I completely agree that she is very sweet and very dumb no she's actually growing on me yeah I know I know I, I some people do not like her. Like some people who watch the show come away with it not really appreciating her character, but I feel mm-hmm. like like she is the core of what's she's, going on here. Yeah. She's still the useless one, but that's not a bad thing. Like she's still that She's trope. useless for a good reason. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Like it's you know, it's she's totally got that like like Sayaka's got that whole like moralistic rationality thing and Kyoko's got that whole like you know, this is realism, how it is. Realism. Like, realist thing. individualism. Yeah. yeah. And Madoka has, like, a reasoning of her own, and it's very innocent, but it's still very, like, mm-hmm. like, she's putting up such a fight about making this decision, but she's right to do so. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
she seems like in when you're like someone watching an anime and you're going, oh, this is gonna be great. You're gonna be a magical girl. This is gonna be own. It's easy to say that, but she is taking, I would say, probably the most rational approach to this, which is like treading extraordinarily lightly. I bet you could probably assign each of these girls to a particular school of philosophy. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> probably I bet you could. It would not surprise me. I'm serious. Like, um, I bet you could. Like, I'd, I'd have to think it through more before I could actually have examples, but, like, Kyoko seems pretty utilitarian to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you could probably... Utilitarian or, or like... Hedonist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, utilitarianism like, is, um, you know, the philosophy utilitarianism, like, right? What works you know, honestly, I don't like the people. technical academic definition of it. Mm-hmm. Probably not. <laughs> utilitarianism is is basically like the the philosophy of supervillains um yeah. where what's the best for the most people exactly regardless of what's it's the like best if, for a couple if say you have 10,000 chickens that are going to be drowning or you have one person who's going to be drowning who do you save well you save the chickens because those will go on to feed x amount 10, of people, people. Yeah. etc so, you know what i mean like where it's all and kyoko's thing is i'm going to protect myself because ultimately i'm still doing mm-hmm. the best work getting these things done in the first place exactly like i don't know i don't know if i agree with that because i feel like she's very um hedonistic yeah. i feel, it's I feel like, like i feel like yeah i agree she, with you. she she doesn't really she's not really looking at it anymore as something she's doing for the good of society yeah. yeah she's really looking at it as okay you know what i'm just gonna the way i'm gonna cope with this is to just live for myself yeah she's rationalizing mm-hmm. it that way but yeah. it is definitely much more i think like just 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 gonna have to be about me because if it's about anybody yeah. else it's suffer i suffer too much and it's not worth she, it she she like we mentioned before she is a disappointed idealist yeah yes. and Mo- saika is just a, an idealist the biggest of moods mostly i was kind of talking about how she spends her grief seeds pretty much like mm-hmm. you know farming them and all of that kind of thing because that's that's a very utilitarian approach to that yeah. like i said i'd have to think about it some more but i bet you could probably slot each of these girls into a particular, oh, a particular philosophy, world of thought which is interesting like that's i don't know <laughs> it is like i like that that different perspectives are, are represented so well mm. and like sayak is kind definitely framed as the least effective one but again given Ginner Pucci's yeah general philosophy and approach I wouldn't say that's surprising. Mm-hmm. No, Sayaka is definitely the hyper idealistic, like Tumblr teenager who has like no <laughs> sense, no, no sense of nuance or like, it's true. like, She's... like, like they they have the right ideas, but they're applying them so rigidly that it, they mm-hmm. they get to incorrect outcomes, kind of situation. Yeah, right? she's yeah. the one I would associate with zealotry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what mommy would be whatever like what is it when you completely buy into a system and you and you you base your entire worldview around accepting that a certain system is correct I don't know. like off the top okay. of my head off the top of my head that would be stoicism um, maybe yeah because stoicism is as it was explained to me back in a million years, years ago. 101 <laughs> was basically like whatever place you have in life it is your job to fulfill that role the best you can. So if you're the child of an abusive father, then your duty is still to be the best son that you can be. Mm-hmm. You you shouldn't be. You have to do to the best with the, the shitty system. hand you get given. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that. that's that's yeah. where I would. Put that. <laughs> I can I can Thanks. totally I can absolutely see that. Yeah, it would be interesting. I don't know. Probably there's somebody who's got more current knowledge of philosophy than I do. Um, send us, send us your yeah. takes on which which philosopher each of the magical girls. Would Madoka be. is humanism filtered through Star Trek: The Next Generation. Oh, <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong. Not wrong. Well, wait. Now that wrong. leaves that leaves <laughs> Homera then. Oh, she's a rough one. You know, I'm not. I'm going to reserve judgment there until I find out what her actual agenda That's is. That's true. So does, 
It does mm-hmm. not sound like her goal is to save the world. It sounds no. more like her goal is to save Madoka. <laughs> yeah, uh, not. I mean, it's not really a spoiler, but we are going to get an entire episode devoted to her backstory. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So, good. Good. Yeah. Is that episode ten? <laughs> uh, She's like, don't tell her. Okay. Don't we tell shall her. see. Fair. We Fair. shall see. Yeah. I I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't give us any info. <laughs> well, now that we're like on well, episode eight. Honestly, yeah. this is like the last of the big spoilers that made me like not able to share a lot of what I wanted to say earlier. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, so that that reminds me. Now I can say some yes. of the things I wanted to say earlier. Let's do this. So here's my theory Debrief. about the the chair thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we know that Homura has time powers. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. My theory is that whenever you see a scene like that with the weird voyeuristic chairs, mm-hmm. that is a scene that has happened in previous timelines. <gasps> I love it. Ooh. Yeah. So so the, I love it. the scene at the very beginning where Madoka wakes up with her at her and wakes up her mom in the in the room. Has a million that, chairs in it. That has happened in every single time. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Yes. The scene where where um, Sayaka makes a wish with Kyube inside Kyosuke's hotel room. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that had a few chairs. So that doesn't mm-hmm. happen in every timeline. Yeah. But it has happened in a few of them. You're narrowing it down as you go along. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. So y- as like as the story goes on. Because different things happen in each timeline, you see fewer and fewer repeat scenes. You know, that's really nice. Yeah. That's cool. That I is like that. that is my worth another watch yeah yeah. That's it. my theory when it comes to the chairs. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I could I could totally see that. Yeah. That what what was sense. the other chair scene? Like when Sayaka was in her room for the first time with with Kube getting ready to go hunt mm-hmm. witches. I think Which there's has some the triple ding because there's the mirrors, yeah, the chairs, yeah. The chairs. Yeah. yeah. So that's another thing that maybe happened yeah. in some timelines, but not all of them. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. And random chance would result in not every scene having all those chairs because you would end mm-hmm. up making new situations in each timeline, even if they weren't ultimately relevant to mm-hmm. changing the end result. Right. Yeah, I like and that. then. And then there was one other thing. So, do you guys want to know a spoiler about? I mean, it's 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 a spoiler, but it's not in any medium. It's like mm-hmm. in like an interview or something, or it's sure. in okay. like it, it's not really a spoiler for anything we're going to see in the beginning. It's like something you would find if you read the wiki. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I might as well just tell you it now. Yes. Yep. Okay. So Charlotte, the witch from episode three that killed. Mommy. Mommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was the, the lore from her is that she was a girl who was at the hospital and her mother was dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. And she her she was really, you know, of course, very sad and upset that her mother was dying. And Kyube mm-hmm. appeared to her there while the girls were at the hospital. So like within the first within the preceding ten or fifteen minutes of when you see Charlotte appear. Mm. Right. Okay. Kube, Kube appears and he offers her a wish and she's so upset and so sad that she wishes for one more tea party with her mother or like one more dessert with her mom before Oof. she dies. Mm-hmm. So so she gets her wish and then her mom dies immediately. Mm-hmm. And then Kube says to her, why didn't you just heal your mom? Derp. And as soon oh. as he said that, she falls into <laughs> so much <clears throat> despair that she immediately becomes a witch. Well, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, you asshole. That, that, is that the, escalates quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's the backstory behind Charlotte and why she has, like, hospital and dessert-themed stuff uh, in her labyrinth. Yeah. That's sad as fuck. That is sad. <laughs> uh, but that totally speaks dickhead. to that whole, like, conversation we kept we keep having about how the decisions keep getting made rashly. Yeah, yeah, like not exactly. Not only is it like little kids making these decisions, they keep getting made in situations where they're not really thinking it through very well. well that was Cuba's intent. Yeah, yeah, he he approaches them when they are emotionally compromised. Yeah, yeah, like oh, you seem upset about something. Is there a certain wish I could give you right now in this moment? Because <laughs> like, that's when people are thinking the most clearly about what they actually want. Yeah, exactly. And he does the same thing to Monica. Yeah, yeah. 
every time he tries to go after Madoka to get her to make a wish, it's in She's some wrong. kind of serious situation. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> so, Kyube Oof. man. And yet, Sayaka spends all this time thinking about it and chewing on it and contemplating it and still makes a dumbass rash decision, too. So, like... Well, Sayaka's I mean, got issues. She's got, when it comes yeah, to so Sayaka, that's, that's, that's why that happened. <laughs> but, like, but that's like with Mommy deciding, I don't want to die, instead of, I don't want this car crash to have ever happened. Yeah, I want my parents to live, too, versus I don't want to die. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting, like, as a kind of, like aside, like, as a comment on how young people think especially, there's, like, that kind of future-oriented. It, it doesn't seem to occur to any of these magical girls to go back. Mm -hmm. Only yeah. to create a future. Like, like obviously, Kyube is not giving them this option. He's not saying, by the way, you could, if you wanted, go back. There's the presumption that the only thing that they can do is affect the future, so they keep making decisions based on that presumption when it's not there. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, whereas, like, frankly, if you'd come up to me and said, you can do any wish, there's a good chance I would do something, like, rewind mm -hmm. in some way. Yes. Send me back to being 14 so I can make different life decisions. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're 14, the idea of going back is bizarre. Everything about yeah. your life is going forward at, like, a yeah. blinding speed. So yeah. it, it is interesting that none of these magical girls really stop and think, hey, maybe we should just go back in time. Mm -hmm. Right. And and undo whatever the shitty thing that sucks is. Yeah. Again, Except for Homura. maybe Homura, right? Except for maybe Homura and maybe Madoka. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what I think Madoka's gonna do, to be honest. That's yeah. my theory. Yeah. You're you're basically importing Lane into this. Yeah, at this hit point that big all reset button. Yeah. 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 Madoka is gonna do something along the lines of a reset. How that reset goes, like either Kyube never existed and was a cat all along or you know, the magical girls never existed, or something like that that's going to, like, radically rewrite how this whole system goes. Because she's, she's the revolution duel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's she gonna is. bring the whole system crashing Yeah, down. and, and I look forward to talking about that, because I, I just, I really <laughs> love, I love the ending of this anime series so much. I'm looking and forward to it. That, without a doubt, is part of why I don't like Rebellion because it's a continuation of it, and I really feel like it's a story that didn't need to be uh, continued. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Like yeah. if you end it well, why are you going back? Why exactly, stop? exactly. Money, ha money, money, money. You had it right the first yes. time. Yes, yes. So that was episode eight. Great episode. Mm -hmm. I love that episode. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad you guys enjoyed it. I'm so glad we're past oh, so the good. biggest of spoilers now, too. Now we can talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of strangling, <laughs> isn't it? Not to yeah. be able to talk. But we did call this way, way long ago. I mean, too. you yeah. did. You did. And okay. I was... You want to you know something really messed up? Yeah. You remember my Colombian friend, Laura? Yes. She called, and I didn't want to say anything about it, but she actually called the magical girls turning into witches back in episode one. Oh no! <laughs> I I'm serious, like like. But again, I, even if you told me that in episode one, because I like yeah. we suspect it, it does not matter. No, the journey yeah, like, is worth. No. You still want to see what this, happens. I'm yeah. just so yeah. impressed, though. I'm just yeah. so impressed because she got so much more out of that than even we did. It's yeah, like, oh my god, yeah. we need to get her. We need to get her like on the show or something. Yeah, she, I, we <laughs> should hilarious. maybe start lining up some guests because yeah. I know of at least, I have three people in mind already that I would love to have <laughs> guests on the show. So maybe we're not Excellent. quite ready for that yet, but maybe in a few more episodes, if you would like to be a guest on the show, send us an email. Just wait yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Actually, um, and we, we should do character episodes the way that Imagine Me and You Tuna did. Yeah, that would be sure. awesome. But I, I don't want to do that until we've no, finished until at least after. Rebellion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, I want to have the yes. full, the total package, so to speak. The total package. The total yes. package. Oh my god. All right, Good so should so, we, let's move on let's to curious that cat. curious cat that yeah. we skipped over. Yeah. So, hello. So, Anonymous says, hello, question for episode eight's podcaster later. What do you make of Itomi's arc? When she tells Sayaka that she's going to ask Kyosuke out tomorrow, is she trying to push her to hurry up and make a move so Sayaka can either get him or start getting over him, and Hitomi won't have to keep watching Sayaka pining? 
because Hitomi's you spend more time watching him than I do sure sounds like she spends a lot of time watching Sayaka. Yes, I'm a Shiori, san- Shiori fan, why do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> we did answer some of this in the last episode, yeah. but, but but she actually went through with it and did go after Kiyosuke without discussing it with Sayaka again, which is what she said she was going to do, mm-hmm. which is some actually shocking I think, you know, I think this, this questioner is is fishing for some yuri yuri fishing yeah i think this questioner is fishing for hitomi well, to be involved with sayaka or want to be involved with sayaka i think somehow. hitomi is too smart to involve herself with sayaka. <laughs> sayaka's a hot mess she, and hitomi she, probably is a mess yeah <laughs> she's yeah that's yeah that's not that's not a but I think that's I think that's it. what this this question is getting at <laughs> though is is well, Yuri fishing? Yuri comment is <laughs> Honestly, I support you, anonymous, as a shipper myself. You <laughs> you ship and you you go for it and don't worry about it. God bless. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I read Hitomi as being the eight kind of the way we've kind of already talked about it. Like like being in the same category as Madoka's mom. Like yeah. Um, yeah, like she is not magical girl material. She already works hard to 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 make mm-hmm. her dreams come true. She's mm-hmm. confident. She's emotionally mature. She, you know, she she doesn't need a wish from Kyube to get what she wants. She just does it. She She's, just goes for it on her own. Regardless of whether it's a good or a bad thing, she's entirely mundane. Yeah. And 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 she doesn't she doesn't have her head in the clouds. She's grounded mm-hmm. in reality. Whereas Nor- normal healthy people don't make interesting magical girl shows. No, yeah. that is that's absolute... why they're always the side characters. Yeah, that's that's you know, Kyube goes after a certain kind of person. Like he's a predator. He he goes after yeah. a certain kind of girl. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't go after the Hitomis because he knows the Hitomis aren't going to put up with him. Yep. <laughs> I yeah. mean, <laughs> Kyube is is the guy. So now, do you want to fuck the cat? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, no. I know, I know. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. It just reminded and me. And he's a not lot a cat. Bio. He's a fucking uterus, which makes he's him a, a lot less fuckable. Is my uterus idiot? cat? <laughs> he's a uterus and ovaries, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, I I maintain even now, whatever Kyube is about. It's rational. Probably, yeah. He's I'm not gonna say he did nothing wrong, but he did nothing wrong. Yeah, we're gonna I get mean, into we are definitely so, gonna get into that. I have yeah. a lot to say when it comes yeah. when it comes to that kind of thing. I'm like look, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. But yeah. um but Yeah, he told me is the absolutely normal, sane, mature person that makes for boring stories. But by all means, dear listener, please Ship Hitomi and Sayaka. Yeah, you save, save someone that. save Sayaka. Yeah. Yeah. You you go as far as you can with that. You you do. Why don't that. you, you write me a story? Yes. Yes. I send, send us it. Send us that you. fanfic. Yes. <laughs> I support somebody saving Sayaka. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe it should be Kyoko, really. It should be. But, yeah. Yeah, but but if it's gonna Kyoko be Kyoko is too self preserving to ultimately, I think, put up with that much shit for that long. I, and she's not pink. Mm, we okay, shall no, 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 no. see. So, aside, we have some other questions here, but yeah. one of them I think is good for the next episode. So let's maybe okay. hold on to that one. Yeah. And then there's the whiskey sours one we already saw. <laughs> yes, and we're making the scene. Yeah, yes, I'm gonna. We're gonna do scene. this. We're gonna. I'm do gonna this. like poke through my liquor cabinet and. Look for some inspo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I also wanted to point out some listener emails and feedback that we got. Yeah. So we mentioned in the last episode that we were working on some merchandise that people could buy to help support the show. Mm -hmm. So this, these comments come from the very talented artist, Errol, who is doing the design work for that merch for us. Yeah, it's that so gorgeous cute. little yeah, button. Yeah, she is a, she is a longtime friend of mine. Um, we are very close. I kind of think of her as a little sister. Hi, yeah. Errol. I know you're listening to this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Errol. Nice to meet you. Yeah. That button I, is she's, gorgeous. She's one of the three people I mentioned that I would love to have on the show. Um, mm, but th- this is what she has sent me over Discord when she's listened to some of the episodes. Mm-hmm. So this is after we were talking about Sayaka not making sense with the blue one. 
Mm. Right? So she has this to yeah. say. You guys are right that Sayaka contradicts the usual blue-coated character trope in the sense that blue usually means the cruel-headed intellectual. But blue also often symbolizes healing and deep emotion, and especially sadness, which all reflect Sayaka in its own way. I find it interesting that Sayaka both fits and doesn't fit the blue character trope. I would also add to that that it's also, you know, it invokes that image of water, too, which also has yeah. to do with healing, you know? The curtains so, are blue. Yeah. Water sadness. is traditionally associated with... Um, Purity? I'm just... I'm, Cleansing. I'm thinking of this in terms of tarot, actually, because we are working on the Utena tarot deck project. It is going very slowly, but it is going. So that's a thing that um, people need to be watching out for. But mm -hmm. in tarot, water is the suit of cups. Um, it's associated with the West. It's associated with emotions, healing, and... Um, yeah, definitely what you were saying, too, about purity and cleansing and that kind of thing. Which kind of, like, so, like, like because it's a cup and it contains the element in and of itself, it's kind of like that whole, it's it's kind of going toward the idea that Blue, and, and for her specifically, she's the one that is actually most interested, ultimately, in whether what she's doing is worth it. Mm -hmm. Globally, mm -hmm. yeah, because like Kyoko and and Madoka are like they they're making the decisions in other ways, but Sayaka is actually going to go. Is it worth it to do this? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it to take this on myself? Is the yeah, dude? I, I get my money's worth or not? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Which I mean, I think I think kind of goes with the whole idea that it, she's the container for the world's sadness. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. So which I can see. Errol also wanted to mention this on, mm -hmm. remember when we we were talking about whether it was inappropriate or not for her soul gem to, to be on her belly button? Belly button? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is what she had to say about that. Okay. Um, she, I saw it more as an effort to be creative about where the gems are in the girls' outfits designs. It's fine to have people read into the possible ways it could be seen as lewd, but I feel like the gem placements have a lot of symbolism behind them. Like, I always saw Sayaka's gem placement being on her stomach as a way to visually symbolize that her core value is to go with her gut. So Valid. it is literally represented through her soul gem placement. It could also represent the solar plexus chakra. That chakra has to do with setting out and achieving goals, standing up for yourself, and being a leader. It basically deals with self-confidence and self-discipline. An overactive solar plexus chakra results in being over energetic, aggressive, and making rash decisions. And then in Discord, she did the think emoji. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, those think, are those yeah. are definitely good points. Um, I think for Vana and I, it was really more just it was a, more of a, a like, knee jerk. Right? Oh my god! <laughs> and yeah, knee jerk yeah. reaction to it. Yeah, but it, yeah. it does make sense because like uh, Kyoko's is like on her chest, and then Mommy mm -hmm. had the one in her. On the yeah, side of her, her head, hair. like on her yeah. temple, almost. Yeah. yeah. And so, then yeah, Hemera's is on the back that. of her hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. So thank I don't really you. know what the chakras mean off the top of my head. No, I, I really like that. Well, I like Errol is very into like tarot and mm -hmm. Myers Briggs and like all of those like uh, astrology yeah. adjacent kind of things. Mm -hmm. So maybe she can tell us about some of that when she comes on the show. Yeah, in the yeah no, that'd yeah. be great. Yes, I want to yeah. hear about really I want to hear about the chakra stuff especially because yeah. I, I know that kind of thing yeah, shows up a lot. Chakras really aren't my forte. Uh -uh. Yeah. I also wanted to give a shout out to a Tumblr user. Um, I don't know how to how to say their Tumblr name, but it's Tom T -E, T O M T E Fairy Tale Blog on Tumblr. Um, they mm -hmm. sent us a really nice message on Tumblr. Um, apparently, they they write about fairy tales and the symbolism and historical significance behind them, and they shared with us some uh, meta posts they had written about some of the witches. And they're, I took a look at them. They're really cool. Um, they're, but they're about some of the witches that we will see in the next episode and onwards. Oh, so okay. I didn't want to talk about them yet. So we are episode. sad. We are sad because we cannot look. I wanna, yeah. I want to go yeah. to witches. Um, okay. I know. The witches are so cool to, to mm -hmm. I love them. But, but okay. we're, I do want to talk about that in the upcoming episodes when we see those witches. So yes. 
Thank you so much to Tom Tay Fairy Tale Blog. Uh, they're super nice. Um, it would be really cool to have them on the show too because I had a lot to say about it. And I just wanted to give them a shout out and say thank you for enjoying the show and bothering yeah, to send us a message. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and this goes to everyone else too. Like, if you have some thoughts that you want to share with us, you can send us an email, um, madokamagicast at gmail.com. I guess since this is the end of the episode, we might as well plug ourselves on social media to let everybody yes. know where they can send us their thoughts. Um, <laughs> okay. So we're so. on Madoka Magicast on both Tumblr and Twitter. Madoka okay. Magicast on Curious Cat. Um, I already mentioned the email. So, And then we have our own individual t- uh, Twitters, too, that you could technically reach out to us for if you want to do podcast-related stuff. So mm-hmm. I am Lambda Power, like Lambda, like the Greek letter, and power uh on twitter there's links there to all the other stuff i do if you are curious okay and uh for us you can find us at ohtori.nu that's our website and it has pretty much everything we've done for the last 20 years or so (laughs) Um, we're also doing kappa connection uh, yes which which is the subcast to imagine me and yutana's domcast (laughs) <laughs> um, but I'm never gonna let go of that because Panda cringes whenever she really I say it. She that. hates it. I'm <laughs> sure oh, are, oh, are you gonna love is. the next episode? <laughs> <laughs> You've probably already seen the Photoshop I did anyway. That's I did not see anything. Yeah, that is the podcast about Sarazan Mai, which yes. is the currently Sarazan airing Mai. new Ikuhara anime about butt stuff. Okay. That's stuff. all you need to know. Frog books. <laughs> oh yeah. What but yeah, answer. so we're on that and you yeah. can get a hold of us on Twitter at O H T O R I underscore N U or you know, there's my Twitter which is Yasho Tori, but really doesn't I never use it really. Vana, do you have your own Twitter? I do not. Okay, so that's when, okay. No, so I'm when the I one post with the shit burners. on uh, the empty move fit Twitter, it's horny on me. I don't have any others. <laughs> Actually, no, I do have I do have the Yakuni more account. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so there's Yakuni underscore more. And it's I just kinda like randomly post like crap JK Rowling. Yeah, kind of the crap. kind of thing that JK Rowling posts um, only about Utena. But it's all I- about Ikuhara stuff. stuff. Mostly Utena because you know that that's the thing I know. I I also have another account, but it does not show up very often, and I'm not going to bring it up. That's okay. Wow. That's your. That's your. <laughs> it's it's my secret. That's your bullshit. porn retweet account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, it's 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 my Accio account. Every oh, once in a while, someone drops such a fucking hot take on Twitter <laughs> that I literally <laughs> cannot resist, and I will answer in like six tweets in Accio speak. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this is I'm really very good the best this, way to deal with trolls. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> the first time I did it, I did it with the empty movement account, and then I was like, well, fuck this. I should just make an accurate account for this. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you will only see that account if someone drops an extraordinarily hot take. Yeah. So, if people find those, send them to us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as Madoka goes, no. I, I would like the podcast to have the position that no take is hot. No, uh, I, this I would, is this I is mean, specific. I, will, you know, I would, I would to like, Madoka. I would like to say that everyone's takes on Madoka. I, I would like to hear those <laughs> takes, even if I vastly disagree with them. But Fair. you know, you guys are the Utena esper- experts. So when it comes to Utena, I, I, I trust you when it comes to which takes. Okay, I'm just saying. The right. last time I did this, the limits. take, the take was that feminism was not an, a topic of conversation in Utena, and yeah, Utena had nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's no. what I mean when I'm talking mm, about a hot take. No. <laughs> No, that's that's like saying Evangelion has nothing to do with depression. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, Pretty that's, much. That's so hot that I couldn't say no. Yeah. 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 So, so but yeah. actually, though, if anybody has got that level of hot take about Madoka, please, please show me. I would love to hear. Yeah. This. I want to see like what the really yeah. truly disastrous takes are for yeah. Madoka because like, I have a feeling they get really good because yeah. Yeah, this is reminding yeah. me to talk in the future about a certain debate I had with somebody on the Madoka Magica subreddit. Yes. Uh, oh, oh ago. dear. Ooh. Rip. <laughs> Honestly, this guy was talking to me in complete good faith, so I don't want to say he was being a dumbass. He was just, we were having an honest conversation. But, uh, but. I, let, let's suffice to say we did not see eye to eye on some things. Yeah. 
Yes. But we can get into that in the future. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Oh, hey, were we gonna have wishes? Do we have Oh wishes? my gosh. Wishes? Yes, wishes. Okay, what are what are your let's do it real quick. What are your wishes What's for your wish? this episode? Oh my gosh. How come I always have to go first? <laughs> okay. I honestly I wish I knew whether that conversation between the two guys was something that Gen Urobuchi had seen before the series or during the series because I really feel like feel that like could have been the thing that started the whole series. Yeah. yeah. I really do feel like that. Fair, fair. I would love to know that. But so that I wish I had had wish. two fewer of those like shaft shots of the face. <laughs> like where <laughs> she's like craning didn't... her head back. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. like panning upward. I didn't need so many of those to convey that she was going out of her mind, but that's okay. That's a minor criticism. I like, wish what? I wish there was more cynical Taiyaki munching in this episode. True. <laughs> All she had were Pringles. Yeah. Although I've had Japanese Pringles and they're amazing. So valid, I guess. They are. Yeah. They are really Ugh. good. I don't know what it is, but junk food is just better in Japan. They're just better at junk yeah. food. I think it was yeah. Takoyaki Pringles. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, I just I destroyed those. Oh, my God. I, my <laughs> husband and I got Takoyaki in Nakihabara at like 8 o'clock at night mm. one day we oh. were there. So good. Oh, yes. Makes you want to go back, like, right now. <laughs> I know. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, food. that's uh, food talk on here on Madoka Magicast, <laughs> your new number one Japanese food podcast. Yes. That's right. Don't, don't even. <laughs> don't threaten right. like that. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you next week. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.